You're listening to Parasearch UK Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Spirit Dimension with your host, Kerry Greenaway, right here on Parasurge Radio. Good evening and welcome to The Spirit Dimension. My name is Kerry Greenaway and my goodness, I have got a show for you tonight. I have got an absolutely amazing co-host, Mr. Carl Hutchinson is in the house with me tonight. Good evening, Carl. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I'm doing good. Good. You was out investigating last night, weren't you? Uh, I was indeed, yeah. It's been a, been a little while, but yeah, I was out investigating, didn't get home till seven this morning, so a little bit jaded today, but uh, all good. Ah, oh, that's what we like to hear, the paranormal hangover kicking in for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have an absolutely amazing guest for you tonight. He is a TV personality, a journalist, an author, a globetrotter. He has worked with just about every paranormal television show you can think of from America, he has a site called ParanormalPopCulture.com. He has been done so many television programs on the paranormal, cryptozoology, all sorts of areas, including paranormal lockdown evidence revealed. He's also um, a guest speaker at this year's Sage Paracon that's happening next weekend in the UK, um, which is absolutely awesome. And he's been a zombie on The Walking Dead. This is Mr. Aaron Sagers. Good evening, Aaron. How are you? Hey, Carrie, thanks so much for having me today. And uh, hey, Carl, good to see and hear you. And you. Well, where should we start? Let's talk zombies. Let's let's get that out of the way because I'm such a fangirl, <laughs> as everybody knows. I am a fangirl of The Walking Dead, and it's a big, big episode tonight on The Walking Dead. So I'm going to cover this quickly before we move on to you. <laughs> How did you get to be a zombie on The Walking Dead? How did that come about? I mean, I've been, uh, I mean, I've been a big zombie head for a good long while, and I've talked a lot about zombies and written a lot about zombies uh, throughout the last several years, um, and have had the fortune of meeting and interviewing and hosting people like George Romero and working with Max Brooks, um, who wrote World War Z, and and just along the way, uh, I've interviewed everybody from The Walking Dead. Um, I've been on set, and uh, and yes, I. Uh, I was turned into a zombie by Greg Nicotero, who is executive producer, one of the executive producers, and of course, like an iconic uh, zombie, uh, a special effects creator, and who works on The Walking Dead. So um, it was just through the course of my work as a journalist and, um, you know, and professional nerd, nerd gone pro, as I say. So it, it's it was a lot of fun. I've had a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of nerdy experiences that uh, I'm uh, that that makes my my nerd heart happy. <laughs> oh bless you! So how do you think tonight's going to go on the show? How do you think he's going to have his big exit? Old Nick Grimes, Rick Grimes, even Nick Grimes is Nick. Rick Grimes. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think his exit will go? There are so many theories out there. Yeah, I mean, I I think that. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that hasn't seen the last couple episodes, but I think that, um, you know, he's not going to ride into the sunset. I think we're going to, we're going to see a pretty final end for Rick. And then this is going to be an episode where there's a lot of, um, 
dream sequences or flashbacks or where we see old faces um, back on the screen that we haven't seen for a while. And uh, I think it's going to be an emotional farewell. And, um, you know, as as is warranted, because Mm -hmm. Andrew Lincoln really has been the the heart of this of this show and of this series. And, um, you know, he he really he he brought Rick Grimes to life from the comic book. So I think they really are going to give him a nice send off. Yeah, let's hope so, because, as you say, he's been very. Um, an integral character from the very, very beginning. And let's hope they can keep it going without his him as a character in there. Yeah, we'll see, right? I mean, I don't think I don't think The Walking Dead is going anywhere anytime soon, but it is going to be questionable about whether or not they can maintain momentum after after, you know, Andrew Lincoln leaves and after uh, Lauren Cohen is gone, and you know there's there's going to be a lot of. I, I think it's only going to be a matter of time before Denai Guerrera steps away from this series. Uh, so it's going to be interesting seeing how this show goes without any of those super popular characters aside from Daryl. Well, this is true. This is true. It's one of my favorite characters. Is Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> So, are you team, or was you, should I say, Team Rick or Team Negan? Oh, um, I would definitely say I'm Team Rick. I don't really root for the bad guys so much. <laughs> and um, and I, well, I mean, I, I don't really find there to be any kind of um, redeeming qualities about Negan. You know, so when if we were talking about Star Wars... There's elements of the Empire and of the dark side that uh, I enjoy talking about. But uh, when it comes to, like, Negan, I think Negan is all bad. I'm definitely Team Rick and Team Good Guys. Ah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> right, that got that Walking Dead bit out of the way. That got my little, my little personal thing out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you have been involved in the paranormal in the, on the media side of things for a really long time now. What is it, about 10 years? Or longer? Yeah, I mean, if, wow. Uh, I think it's closer to 13, 13 and a half years at this point, yeah. So how did you get into the media side of it, you know, coming away from, um, you know, like just doing it for your own personal interest and then stepping into the media front? Well, I've always been interested in the paranormal. Um, And as a young kid, entertainment and paranormal, paranormal pop culture were always connected for me. I was always reading a lot of uh, true ghost stories and theories while also watching scary movies and watching the twilight zone and reading comic books and reading uh, creepy comics or tales from the crypt, things like that. So all of the entertainment paranormal were always connected for me. Uh, And then I went into a career as a journalist in, in for newspapers and magazines. And when in the United States, when Ghost Hunters first premiered, I was already aware of Most Haunted from the UK and the documentary series uh, A Haunting, A Haunting in Connecticut, in, Con- in Connecticut which mm-hmm. uh, featured John Zappas. So, but when Ghost Hunters came along, I just, I knew that this was going to connect with people. I, I predicted it and my prediction ended up being correct. And it also coincided with the rise of social media so I, I said that this really is going to allow this message to go beyond city limits. So people will, who have these interests and beliefs uh, will be able to connect in an easier way instead of uh, facing some sort of rejection or judgment in their, their community. So it was just a matter of predicting it. And then from there... I met uh, Grant Wilson and Jason Hawes from Ghost Hunters. I I did some uh, ride-alongs with them. I attended some events, and and it just sort of it became this thing where I started talking about uh, these these topics because because I was interested in them, but there there was also readership interest in it, and um, you know, so I was doing that for mainstream media before I launched. Paranormal Pop Culture, which was in 2009, and that was just sort of my own dedicated website to exploring the cross-section of entertainment and the paranormal. What was one of the first things that um, really started to 
when you started doing the media side of it, were there, were there things that were really starting to annoy you at that point? Or is that sort of, you've never really sort of, you've always understood the, the reasoning behind the media side of things? Or do you, do you get annoyed about things um, to do with the shows and that, that are out there? Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. And I understand that when you're putting together a TV show, it you, there's certain elements that you really have to hit. It has to be entertaining. There has to be dramatic moments. There has to be some sort of payoff at the end. I understand sort of the formula of, of, of this. It is mm-hmm. it's it, it's a packaged piece of entertainment. Yeah. Um, however, it does bother me when there is historical inaccuracies. I mean, look, again, I I operate first and foremost as a journalist. I operate as a fact-based person. And when we're dealing with the paranormal, I focus on the history first. These are documented facts. And then here are the theories or the reports after the fact. And you can believe those or not believe those. That's up to you. And you can investigate and try to find evidence. But the core, the history still has to be well-reported and documented and reliable. So when you get the history wrong, that does bother me. And and it creates a ripple effect where everybody starts going to these locations having incorrect information that it, it just it, – it, dilutes the possibility for a good a good investigation but it also just muddies the water as far as the facts um and a good example of that is the la Lori mansion in new orleans it is a scary place it is a place rife with with horrendous history terrible things have happened there but popular culture uh, both reality tv and and script scripted tv has added so many inaccuracies to the history that it takes away from the real history, which is still very tragic. Mm. Yeah, Carl? No, I was just going to completely agree. I think sometimes when you, you you have to take a step back when you're watching some of the paranormal shows because of that very reason, because sometimes there are, those inaccuracies about the history of the locations they have they have to i don't want to use hype it up a little bit but it's that sort of that sort of thing when they're talking about the location to get people interested um but then like aaron says you then get, that then ripples through to people that then go out and investigate it and they then start believing or some way along the lines picking up on the what they think is the evidence of what they've seen on the shows so I think you, well, have to, you have to take a step back from it. Yeah. And and Carl, like, you don't watch, well, I don't know. I don't know if you watch, but, you know, you don't watch Grey's Anatomy or one would not watch Grey's Anatomy and say, all right, I'm ready to be a doctor. You know, you shouldn't watch any kind of entertainment and walk away saying that that is top to bottom a, a guidebook on how to follow through. I, I mean, I've seen plenty of things about people that are journalists or work in media that, you know, you, you have to take it as entertainment. Um, and it, what it can do is when, when entertainment is presented in, in a, 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 I hate to say right way, but effective way, then it can inspire people to become more interested in that, that world and that field and, and read and, and research and, hopefully put them on the right path. But, um, but yeah, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think obviously in the UK, um, there's a, there's a there's, as you mentioned yourself, there's obviously most haunted and it has a, a split people splits opinions over in the UK. Um, but it has, and I will put my hand up. It, it, it's what, at, when I first started out on my paranormal career, that was the first thing that I had that been able to watch. I sat there when they did the live shows watching the CCTV cameras, but it was an outlet for my interest. I wouldn't say that I went into the career and said, right, I'm now going to basically be this, this, this because of the show, but it's, it gave me a forum to experience and to chat with like-minded people on the same subject. So, and obviously then when you go, you start then looking at the convention side of things, 
you're then in an environment where you feel comfortable that you're not going to be looked at and think, oh, he's weird, he's into the paranormal. You are surrounded by like-minded people and we all have the same sort of experiences, how we got into the got into it. There's always a certain trigger in anybody's life that got, gets you into this sort of lifestyle, basically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and as I said earlier, like, reading comic books and, and, uh, watching the twilight zone and, um, and, and, you know, being interested, reading all these books about haunted cases when I was a child, that really, that really, uh, scratched my itch for the paranormal and then made me want more, much like most haunted or ghost hunters or ghost adventures can inspire other people to do it and be, you know, you can be entertained by it without, you know, without it having to be the um, the the strict, you know, the 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 strict uh, quote unquote reality of the situation. Yeah, it also gives you it gives you an insight into locations in a way. Obviously, the history yeah. well, you got to do your own due diligence and, and, and look at the history of it. But without most of uh, uh, most haunted, without ghost hunters, without uh, ghost adventures there's a lot of people out there wouldn't see amazing places uh-huh. wouldn't see like the inside of all these like alcatraz or all these types of places you just read about them but you, you actually be able to see the location see what it looks like get a kind of feeling of what it is yeah i, I must certainly agree and i would add to that as well like um the uh the mtv series fear was such a big part of that as well in the at least in the u.s um it eastern state penitentiary in philadelphia is one of my favorite locations and it's a location i've been to a lot and i have um i have a lot of love for but i think one of the first times i I saw it on tv was on this episode of fear on mtv and um and just to just to your point it, it really these shows opened up those worlds, um, those locations to, to, uh, to the audience and to those that even if they didn't believe in ghosts would, would still be interested in seeing like these massive castles and, and locations, um, you know, getting an inside peek at them. Oh, yeah, in, a, in a different way to how you would see it from like a, a history show or something like that, you actually get a completely different viewpoint of the location. And it is, like you say, it inspires people to actually go, God, I can go to these places and do that. And it has had an abs- the paranormal field has had an absolute explosion um, in the last 10 years. Is that a oh. good thing, do you think? Yeah, I, I, I do think it's a good thing. I'm, I think that expansion, it, it's like everything. It, it's, it's, you know, more awareness is a good thing, but it also opens up avenues to irresponsible behavior. I mean, look at, look at, let's say Twitter, look at social media. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good that can happen from people being connected to one another globally, but there's also a lot of bad elements that can emerge as well. So overall, yes, I most certainly think that more attention is a good thing. And even just from a business sense, people are able Okay, um, Fort Mifflin, Fort Mifflin in Philadelphia. I remember speaking to them some time ago where before an episode of the Ghost Hunters um, aired where they investigated Fort Mifflin, this was a Revolutionary War fort uh, of historical significance in the United States that was considering closing down. And then suddenly they ended up on this show where their attendance, uh, by their count, their attendance increased by something like 90 percent suddenly people were going to this location uh there's hotels there's locations that suddenly people are interested in and want to stay over and stay in the haunted room or go to the haunted uh restaurant or whatever so it's good in that very tangible sense as well so yes i think overall this is a this is a net win i agree yeah, with you it's, and I, it's the same in the uk there's uh, yeah. numerous locations that i know of um that if it wasn't for ghost hunters or public events or whatever you want to call it whatever your the way of pigeonholing the type of events that happen that wouldn't be in operation today if it wasn't for the explosion of this industry because at the end of the day it's money i describe it's money for old rope at the end of the day 
you, 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 you're turning the power off, you're letting people wander around in the dark, and they're paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the opposite was true for so long, where there were locations that they, they had these, um, these stories of, of, of hauntings, and they would actually downplay them. You know, no, no, no. We we don't want to talk about the ghost. And now it's like, yeah, we got a ghost. Let's uh, uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> I have to say that there, there is a thing at the moment in um, the UK where every pub it's the most haunted pub in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to well, draw I mean, people in. <laughs> I mean, we get that too. I, I I kind of love it when there's so many places that are the most haunted city, most haunted hotel, most haunted, and 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 it cracks me up because I'm like. What, are the ghosts filling out a census or a, a survey or something? <laughs> it's a, how are you tracking? You know, maybe I don't know. Maybe uh, you know, Boise has the most ghosts, but they just are not very talkative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I agree with you. I totally agree with you. There are locations that have got designated paranormal teams going in there, um, doing events, and it is saving locations. Um, one of a friend of mine in America, Brendan Shea, he saved something called the Licking County Jail because purely and simply through the, off the back of paranormal investigations, the place has now been renovated, which was sorely needed because it was falling down, basically. Um, and it's now a point of interest and historical fact there for people to visit, either as a tourist or as a paranormal investigator. So it's done a huge amount of fantastic um, in for, loco- for, for the locations, is not it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's, I mean, the the accessibility alone. I I, I I very much I tell people this is an interesting world to explore because you do have access to these locations that otherwise you would you may not be able to get into, and even if you're just in it for urban exploration, it's pretty amazing to go to these locations or. Um, you know, go to Coombe Abbey, you know, it, it gives you a, mm. a good, a good reason to go there because suddenly you're part of a community and you don't have to, you don't have to like buy in to all of the messaging because instead it's just like kind of like a fun party held at this location that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have a reason to be at. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's always nice to, when you go to somewhere and you see a curtain that says do not enter, but when you're a paranormal investigator, when you're there, you can go behind that curtain. Mm. Oh, that's so true. So true. I very much agree with that. Well, you've brought in the convention side of it. Now, you do an awful lot of conventions in America, don't you? I do. Um, it's interesting because I, I do a lot of paranormal events, but I also do a lot of comic cons uh, and and fan events that are not just paranormal, but everything from science fiction to comic books to horror uh, so a cross section of things. And, uh, when I do these events, I am hosting on stage with celebrities and I'm also talking a lot about my own areas of expertise, including paranormal pop culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's your favorite out of all of the conventions you've done? Cause it's like you, you do such a cross, across so many different fields. Do you prefer like the horror or do you prefer like the paranormal or what do you, what's your preference? <laughs> well, see, that's a dangerous thing for me to answer because <laughs> I I prefer the ones that want to hire me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay, well, I will say every town, every city has a different flavor and a different personality. Um, you know, the, the the biggest one out there is San Diego Comic Con, and and there's nothing quite like that. That is. It's it's the big show. It's it, it's just massive. But however, there's an event in Atlanta called Dragon Con. It has nothing to do with dragons, um, but it is just a um, it's it's nerdy in a different way. It's it's not so much about new movies and TV shows such as San Diego Comic Con. Instead, it's heavily focused on cosplay, and it's and it's a big party that goes 24 hours a day. It, people joke that it's Burning Man for nerds. It's um, okay. so it's. It, it, it's a different vibe. So, and I've done London film and comic con and that's an entirely different, um, atmosphere and vibe. So it's really about what the city brings. Um, so you, you were mentioning obviously the, 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 the different, and you said you came over to the UK and you did the, uh, the, was it the one in London, Aaron? 
Yeah, the London Film and Comic Con, and I've done some other ones over there as well, which yeah. I am now embarrassed to say I forget the names of. But um, yeah, but I've I've done multiples across the world. Do you? Because obviously you've experienced ones in the UK, you've experienced ones in the States. Do you find that? Because I'm talking to a few of my friends or, that do the paranormal circuit uh, that have done what events over in the UK and events in the States. They they they've always said that they find the 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 people that turn up to the UK ones and the US ones they have a different type of focus. Um, I mean, I think I find that there's there's trends that you see at every convention. Um, so, and it also it depends on what guests are booked into that particular convention if if you happen to have a lot of doctor who actors booked at a specific convention then i think you're going to see probably more doctor who fans there that you know so that the scale may tip a little bit more in that direction so um or if there's a movie that's very much part of the zeitgeist uh then maybe you'll see a little bit more fans dedicated to that specific to the paranormal side of it what I find very interesting is a couple years ago, um, probably about, I don't know, maybe about five years ago, I started really pushing this idea of having paranormal content, paranormal talks and panels at mainstream comic cons. And there was initially a little pushback as far as, well, we, we think these fans are more into science fiction or superheroes and horror, but not paranormal. And I'm like, no, no, trust me. Yeah. And sure enough, you get a lot of people in the room and they're not just fans of the obvious things like the conjuring or supernatural or ghostbusters. It's people that are just interested because every, every place around the world has some sort of cool ghost story or some yeah. sort of urban legend or something. So when you invite people in and you say, look, I'm not asking you to believe or, and I'm not trying to tell you to disbelieve, but let's just share some stories and talk a little bit about the history of this of this place, of this locale, then then it's really cool because you get everybody in there, and um, and it, 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 it's exciting for me because it, it kind of breaks down some of the barriers of uh, dogmatic belief and cynic, or mm -hmm. you know, a, instead it's just like yeah, let's just share some stories, and then whatever you want to believe, you can believe in, but uh, we can all share the, the tales. Absolutely. I think there's there's nothing better than being in an environment where you, you're sitting around, you're having a chat with friends or people that have the same light, and you, you, you're you doing like the ghost stories. You're talking about your own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's it sort of then grows and grows because somebody goes, yeah, I've had, I've had something similar. And it sort of like gets bigger and bigger and becomes a discussion. You then be more interactive with each other about your experiences and that you wouldn't have in a, a normal conversation um, a, anywhere else, if say in the workplace or oh, whatever. I agree. So I think that's always, I, I think that's the, the one of the good things personally for me that has, has gone around a few of the conventions is that when you walk through those doors or you walk through the hotel or the, wherever the convention is, you're surrounded with like-minded people that are there for the same reason as you. Mm -hmm. You're not, because going back five ten years ago you mentioned you're into the paranormal they think you're a devil worshipper and all sorts but now it's everybody has a ghost story everybody that I, I talk to at work who knows what i do outside of the working environment well oh, where have you been this week or what have you done or we listen to you on the radio etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's it's it, it's getting better and i think they should, they, these conventions are a breeding ground of getting people interested again, getting people out in the field, getting them going out in the field. Because we obviously need to expand the field because the more people out there, the more research, the more dedicated evidence you're going to get. Yeah, I I agree with that. And I also, I would add that um, I, I think that popular culture, and look, I'm, I'm obviously subjective here because paranormal pop culture is my thing, but 
I, I think that popular culture is immensely important to getting to raising that interest. So you look at a movie like The Conjuring. Conjuring was such a huge part of um, raising interest and awareness during a time when on TV um, paranormal reality was started dipping down, at least in the United States. And um, and then The Conjuring kind of injected a little bit more energy in it, and then it started coming back a bit. Uh, so I think that. Um, yeah, I, I think it's great. And, and let me just say, for anyone out there, I, I know that, you know, the audience probably tips very much towards the believer side. Whenever I talk to people, though, and they start out by saying, well, you know, it's probably a bad word, but I'm a skeptic. I'm like, no, that's not a bad word. Like, uh, you know, please talk to me, even if you're a skeptic. Like, you know, I have a harder time talking to cynics, but I love skeptics, um, mm. you know, but so when I when I operate in these mainstream spheres at Comic Con, I'm like, no, like it's cool if you don't believe or if you don't know what to believe, as long as you're kind of coming in with an interest in the the history and the stories. Absolutely, absolutely. You've got to have you've got to be objective anyway in in this industry. You can't just be everything I experience is paranormal because there's so many other avenues that it could it could be you've got you've got to be objective or you've got to be you've got to be able to look at things in a logical manner you can't just jump to conclusions and i think skeptic uh, a skeptic i always find it's very very good when you have a skeptic and then they, they experience something that they then have that moment that, that we've all had where the light bulb goes off in the head and goes okay there is more to this yeah oh definitely yeah yeah, yeah. i totally agree with that um, and I think I was always taught, question why. Always ask the why. Yes. Well, I, I, you know, I, this is a little controversial, but, um, you know, in the spectrum of belief, I think there is cynic on one side and then there's also dogmatic uh, belief on the other side. And I yeah. think each are a little bit dangerous um, yeah. as far as if you are so dogmatic then you do not leave any room for questions or for uh, debunking or dismissing certain things. And it becomes almost a religious pursuit where it's, it's hard to, hard to pose those hard questions, um, difficult to pose those hard questions. Uh, So I, I personally try to operate sort of in a middle ground um, and, uh, but everybody has to find their own place on the spectrum. I just find that either end is a little bit tricky to operate in. Well, you're not mm. open-minded if you're at either end of the spectrum, are you? But let's let's uh, talk a bit more about conventions, because you're coming to the UK to attend, as a guest speaker, Sage Paracon next weekend. What, am I? No, I am, yes. No, I'm just joking. Of course, I'm, I'm excited to be there. Um, it's <laughs> a uh, it's only stopping moment there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, only only because it's so close. Like, uh, I'm excited, but it's also like, darn it, I have to pack. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah no, I'm, I'm ex- super excited to be there. I've heard such great things about the Sage Paracon and, um, you know, pretty pretty stoked. I should hope you are, because it is the most biggest and bestest and most exclusive convention in the UK regarding the paranormal. Now, <laughs> now listen, you're fly, you fly in on Tuesday and you're here for a little bit longer than Sage goes on, aren't you? Uh, that is that is the plan. Yeah, I'm going to be sticking around for a few days uh, after after the event. And whilst you're at Sage, you're going to be doing the investigation. Mm-hmm. What part of the That's investigation correct. are you going to do? Do you know? Uh, oh my gosh, uh, uh, MJ is probably going to kill me because yes, I probably know. And right now I forget what part I'm doing. Oh, she's in that chat room. um, She's in our chat room. I know. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. I know. Now I put on the spot. It's, it's very, very, very tricky of you. Um, I don't know, but I am doing the investigation and I'm sure it's going to be, uh, an exciting location and I'm, I'm certainly... Uh, you know, I'm I'm up for anything. You know, my thing is like, put me anywhere, put me in somewhere crazy. Like, uh, I uh, I I like the craziest stuff, and I'm happy wherever wherever I get to to hang out with um, you know all the all of my fellow fans and friends and uh, and guests and uh, attendees. I just want to give a little shout out while we're at this point, because um, 
Pamela from the Spooky Sisters. She is going to be at Sage this year. Jeanette Wally is in the chat room. So is Elizabeth Coa, I believe. Have you met Elizabeth? Uh, yes. I, yeah, I think we have met, actually. Have we she met? Did, we probably She was in we Vegas, Alan. Yes, yes, that's right. We did meet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, MJ saying she's going to get a virgin sacrifice. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wait, am I... Yeah. Am I the virgin in this scenario? Because uh, I'm, I hate to disappoint. Say, yeah, I, I know. Say, that's doubtful, Aaron. <laughs> Not, you know, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I hope to disappoint, hate to disappoint MJ on this, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so there's, you're going to be doing a speaker section as well. So what are you going to be talking about at Sage? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, actually. So I'm um, I'm going to be talking a lot about sort of the history of the entertainment of the un- unexplained, um, sort of how we got here uh, from the early days through, you know, spiritualism, sort of the first appearances of ghosts in popular culture and what they looked like and how they evolved over time to modern times and how social media has influenced our belief in ghosts and how it's reflected in entertainment. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be covering a lot of ground, and I'm excited to, to do so. I, I I have an hour of time, and I'm going to try to get it all done in that time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be good times. And also, while you're there, Aaron, you will be, uh, as I will be there as well, um, you will, have you got your costume sorted out for the Masquerade Ball yet? No, no, I don't. This is another thing that I have to do, which is now causing me a lot of stress. Um, <laughs> there's the, I know there's the, I'm, I'm excited for both. There's the medieval banquet and then also the, um, the vampire ball. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited for both. I am sorting out uh, the costume. Wait, are you guys dressing up for the medieval dinner as well or just for the vampire ball? I'm just, I personally am just dressing up as the, um, for the vampire ball, um, as people know, that because I've been to every single stage at the moment, um, I'm not a big fan of fancy dress. I'm not really into cosplay, um, but I've gone all out this year because I thought, well, why not? You can right. though. You can dress up for both, both obviously the medieval banquet and the masquerade ball. Um, and I do believe that MJ has got a company. If you haven't got an outfit for the uh, medieval banquet that you can hire something from them. Oh, wow. Okay. I um, that's going well, on. I mean, I pretty much show up as a fool everywhere I go. So I already come naturally in costume. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just seeing something from the Tudor times now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't miss you at the airport. It's the jester. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, no, the airport I... is Henry VIII. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, I have to grow the beard back first. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm certainly excited about it, though. Um, yeah, I, I love any time that you can take on. Uh, I, I think I'm not saying this just because I'm going to be at Sage Paracon, but I, I, it, what excites me about this event is that it has all these different elements that's so appealing because, yes, there's the speakers and they're giving their talks and yes, there's the investigation, but there's such a social element to this and such a variety of activities mm-hmm. uh, at, at an amazing location that it really appeals to me. And again, I'm not, this is, I'm not paying lip service um, to, to the event. This is actually something that's excited me and, um, and I've heard such good things about this event in the past that I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. You better uh, yeah, believe it. I, I, no no yeah, one puts it, on a convention like MJ. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we've had some good times at uh, Sage over the last couple of years. So uh, it's it's a good bunch of people, which is it's good. And the, the family, the Sage tribe, gets bigger and bigger every year. The event gets better and better every year. And I know, personally, I want to shout out to MJ anyway, because I know she's listening. Um, she puts a... Uh, so much amount of work into this mm-hmm. blood sweat tears goes into this event and um just because she wants the best possible event she can pull off for the people for people interesting she gets the best speakers to come over um and it's a lot of hard work and i know i know the poor love is probably 
stressing, stressed out to the eyeballs, but it's going to be good. You've got your family around you. We're going to kick it. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Oh, thank you, Shu, because once you've done one of MJ's conventions, you'll be want to come back every year, is what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, did you know she does a paranormal cruise as well, Aaron? Yes, I did know this. I, uh, I'm, um, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if, if I'm going to be able to make the next paranormal cruise, but I want to because, look, ghost on a boat, like I'm, uh, sign me up. I'm down with that. Well, Carl went on the cruise last year, and we did an after show on it. It sounds phenomenal, and you had a great time, didn't you, Carl? I didn't go on the cruise last year. Didn't you? No. Oh, I thought you was on the cruise last year. No. Oh, oh my memory. So it's truly, truly paranormal. We we cannot explain where the yeah. where the after I show came from. Around, I know. Cool. No, I know. I did it with MJ. I'm sure you was on that show. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah. doesn't I, matter. It was it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being a coward, but I never went on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ew, the times fly by. But, go, guys, there are still very, very few tickets left available. You can get investigation tickets. You can get day tickets. Um, I, I think there's literally a small, small number of VIP tickets available. So you've still got a chance to go to Sage Paracon and get in touch with MJ Um I've just shared the link into the chat room um, and she's in the chat room. So if you're interested, get in contact with MJ and she'll sort you out and talk prices and all that sort of stuff with you. There are some amazing speakers this year, Aaron being one of them, Richard Estep, um, Barry Guy, Chris Fleming. Oh, my God. The list goes on and on and on. You get investigation. Yeah, Katrina Wildman. Yeah, she's going to be there. Paranormal lockdown. And you get investigations, you get mis- uh, masquerade balls, you get medieval banquets, you get photo opportunities, you get time to speak to the guest speakers away from the, the stage, the forum. You get a chance to mingle with them and everything. So, guys, it is the best, most exclusive convention in the UK. And as I say, very, very few tickets left. Um, get in contact very quickly if you would still like to attend. Right. Aaron, I hear you yes. like a drink. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the those rumours are true. <laughs> those rumours are true. There is a saying to do with Sage Paracon that what happens at sta- uh, Sage stays at Sage. And this is generally <laughs> because the evenings get a little messy. Are you up for that is what I want to know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly interested in a, a cocktail or two and... Uh, uh, yes, I'm 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 up for it. Although I don't believe that what happens at Sage stays at Sage because I've seen social media. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. everybody's seen John Zappis dancing to Ghostbusters. This right, is exactly. So can you sing, Aaron? <laughs> um, I I prefer not to most times, but um, can I? Uh, uh, Oh man, that's that's that definition of singing. It, it depends on how you uh, what how liberal your definition is. So probably no, <laughs> probably no. Well, I'm sure we'll all find out when we put on Facebook how well you can sing or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand that you have a very big interest in something called tiki. Talk to me about tiki. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know it's it's weird because. Much like the paranormal um, and nerdy stuff like comic books, uh, I do deep dives into things where I want to learn every possible thing I can about a thing and when I come to love it. And tiki is one of those things. Tiki, tiki bars, tiki cocktails. Um, And, you know, uh, I want to tell everyone out there that's not familiar with it, don't dismiss it as just overly sweet drinks with rum because there's a lot of love that goes into a tiki cocktail. But, um, you know, it also involves sort of the idea of of casual drinking and fun and not being pretentious with your cocktails. It's about celebrating this idea of like, you know, um, a tropical vacation, a tropical paradise. Uh, and as I speak to you now, I am actually wearing a brightly colored uh, blue uh, ha- Aloha shirt, they call it, Hawaiian shirt. So yeah, I love tiki and um, I plan on doing a fair amount of tiki um, when I'm in the UK, because there's a couple of great bars there. Ooh. Well, Aaron, I will I will make this deal with you. I'll I'll find because as you know, I like I like a good shirt. 
Um, so I'll dig out my Wally shirt and we can have a drink at Sage in our Wally shirts. I I would love that. Yeah, I mean I've I've already been debating like which which tiki shirts to bring with me. So um, I'll uh, I'll I'll load up some. But and look, here's the deal. Also, if if uh, we have the right ingredient, I will make this this promise. If we have the right ingredients at a bar, I'll even whip up some tiki drinks for anyone that wants some. Wow. Now there's there's a night I want to be on. <laughs> It's it's a night to remember, except you probably won't remember it. <laughs> Sounds like perfect night to me, definitely. <laughs> so, so going back to the, the old tiki, I, I'm fascinated with this um, culture. I've, I've never been. I've been briefly to like a couple of tiki bars, but I like. I'm, I'm more interested in, in like the shirts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my prized joys was a shirt that I bought when I went to Hawaii. Um, so that's that's my prize and joy, proper, original, authentic shirt. Um, but I also I love the the, the, the glasses, the, the 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 cups or the beakers that they they come in because of the work that goes into them. I've, I'm, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, but you have you have a, a few of those. <laughs> yes, I have. I have quite the collection of uh, tiki mugs, and and you are right. It is. It's such a craftsmanship involved in it, and it's um and it becomes like very much a a uh, like a community of collectors. Um, and some of the ones that I've been looking for lately, <laughs> it's actually it's it's very appropriate because there's um, the haunted mansion at at Walt Disney World and Disneyland, and there's been some tiki mugs released that are um, modeled after the Haunted Mansion. So there's the Hitchhiking Ghost tiki mug, which I have now. It just came out a couple weeks ago. And there's a um, – or that's – sorry, it's the Hatbox Ghost that I have now. I also have the Hitchhiking Ghost from a previous year. But, um, yeah, so uh, the tiki mugs, they're, they're a whole thing unto themselves within the tiki culture. So you've got music. You've got the – the Hawaiian shirts, you have the tiki mugs, and of course, you need something to put in the mugs, which are the cocktails. Well, that's the fun part. Yeah, yeah. It's uh there there I mean, and there's a lot of I mean, there's a lot of crossover um between paranormal and tiki. There's uh you know, you've got drinks like the zombie, you know, you've got um the uh grim grinning fog, which is another one. There's a lot of like a lot of cool uh, paranormal themed uh, tiki drinks, and there's also quite a few people that I know in the paranormal field. And uh, uh, one of our good friends, Mr. Frank Sinelli, he's also a big tiki tiki man. Um, so there's also that tie into it as well. Yeah, although I'm going to say it here. I mean, this is a bit scandalous, but I'm pretty certain I got uh, Frank into tiki, but he will never admit that. <laughs> <laughs> so will you be selling any merchandise at sage for people and will it be tiki themed <laughs> I, it's it's funny you ask that i'm actually working on some tiki themed paranormal merchandise um but uh yeah i mean i hope to have some um books uh that i've written i've also got uh some various other merchandise that i'll have on hand and then just some of the you know standard things uh you know maybe if anybody wants like a picture or whatever uh you know i'll have those on hand as well but uh it all depends on what i can pack and get um shipped over there but yeah i'll have some merchandise um but really the thing i'm i'm most interested in is just hanging out with people and talking to people and and nerding out together because the best part about an event about doing these events is that um i am a fan i'm a fan first and foremost and i like associating and talking with my fellow fans you know and Mm -hmm. um just kind of geeking out about this stuff so um you know i that's that's the big draw for me is just kind of talking with people and um you know sharing stories so that that's the most that's the thing i'm looking forward to the most yeah me too because i think one of the one of the coolest things that mj's put on the schedule this year is we're having uh, i think when we have the welcome drink there's the we're going to have like ghost stories like campfire type scenario telling ghost stories Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, I did see that and I hadn't even processed it yet. But yeah, I did see that on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, like 
uh, th- th- again, like it's just that community, that community aspect. And, um, you know, I, the, the ability to, I, I've, I'm, I'm fortunate that this has, that this is my job, that this is something that I do professionally. But again, like I come at this as someone that loves it authentically and sincerely and has all my life. So, um, that's, that's why I love trading stories and then, uh, asking questions of other people and hopefully answering some questions and, um, and just, you know, joining together in this, in this celebration. Well, you're definitely going to have a lot of fun and that's for sure. And how lucky are you? You're doing your passion, um, and earning a business out of it and, you know, doing what you love to do. It's hard work though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's certainly hard work, but, um, I, I really, I, I often joke that if I could travel back in time and talk to sort of 10 year old Aaron, um, I would say like, you know, just you wait kid. Cause all this stuff that you love now, all these nerdy things, this, this is going to be your profession as well. And, um, and so I, I am exceptionally grateful and fortunate, uh, you know, for, for this opportunity and, um, and being able to do things like Sage Paracon and, and, you know, traveling across the pond mm-hmm. to go to a, a haunted location and hang out with a bunch of friends. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Um, have you heard of a game called Cards Against Humanity? I have indeed. I um, I have quite the big uh, pack of it myself, um, including a special Cards Against Humanity carrying case loaded to the brim <laughs> with these cards. Oh, you're well equipped then for Sage, by the sounds of it, is all I can say on yeah. that one. Well equipped indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Carl's like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, uh, the... the, the, the... Sunday night cards against humanity has sort of become a bit of a tradition at Sage. Um, it's a scream. Um, it's been hilariously funny. I've had the pl- uh, privilege of, while playing that, to have a lap dance from Jeff Belanger while playing cards against humanity one year, which was a little bit of a freaky moment. But yeah, it's it's sort of become a bit of a tradition. It's good fun. Well, and and let me just say, like as far as the the, the specific paranormal uh, element, what excites me about these events, and again, like you, you can come at this from any level of belief, um, but what excites me about these events is like, you know, we'll be able to spend a fair amount of time on, on site, in this location, and, and you get to sort of test out different theories like when we're laughing when we're drinking when we're having a dinner when we're dressing up like uh you know there's all these different uh environments and 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 sort of scenarios so that way if there is paranormal activity out there you know you're you're given a lot of different opportunities for something to present itself not just at you know a, a one hour investigation but instead over multiple days and that is thrilling that is really thrilling because you're testing it all out absolutely oh, and, uh, totally. Be, um, this will be the first official um obviously if you've ever stayed there and you've done your own little thing that's that's fine but this will be the first official um investigation of certain areas of Coombe Abbey um, which I'm, I'm uh, the place is amazing I, I, I went to a wedding there a few years ago the place is amazing there's there's a tomb uh, which is just incredible to walk past when you walk, when you're checking in there's this tomb and it is it's amazing the place is you go across the drawbridge you've got the not the drawbridge the moat and the hotel is stunning it's in the middle of a beautiful park it's deep with history and um, to get the chance to actually investigate and stay and hang out with friends, listen to amazing speakers. It's, it's just going to be an amazing, uh, an amazing week. Yeah, I, 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 I agree just based on what I know and, um, well, you know, what I know to be going into. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty beside myself with excitement. I should think you are. Um, have you actually done any research yourself on Coombe Abbey? 
I've done some reading on it. My my plan is to um, do spend a lot of my flight kind of brushing up on everything and retaining the information. So yeah, so I've read about it. Um, and when MJ first invited me to the event, uh, dug into it a little bit. But I'm I, I need to pin down some of the specifics, uh, which I will be doing over the next couple of days. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. So you're going to be fully knowledgeable about the location before you get there. Yeah, I like to be. I like to know what's going on. But um, I also I also think that there's some information that I want to be a little bit blind about, um, you know, just as far as certain activities. So I don't um, don't color my uh, my my own perceptions, you know. Uh, so history wise, I definitely need to lock all of that down and retain all of that. And let me just say, as far as something that I'm seeing in the chat room, uh, we, <laughs> because on. yes, I am paying attention to that. We will have to have a lap dance from Aaron now. Um, well, uh, uh, Pamela, I don't know what kind of cocktails you're making at Sage Paracon, but um, let's see what you got, and then we'll discuss that. Well, I think they all want a lap dance. I don't think it's just Pamela. <laughs> Jeanette, I think everybody <laughs> wants one, Aaron. You could be a lap very busy boy. The... I don't know. I mean, this, uh... well, let's see. Let's see. Again, let's see what kind of cocktails. I can I can easily be bought with good cocktails. <laughs> oh, oh, don't let MJ know. She'll be selling you out for it, putting, putting, little, <laughs> yeah. putting you in the schedule. <laughs> lap dance with Aaron. <laughs> one, 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 one thing that you will, there's, there's another tradition, which uh, I don't know whether Aaron knows about Sage, and that's uh, MJ basically gives out the, uh, and she just tells you to drink the Kool-Aid, and that's all I'm going to say. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, this is the only liver I have, so I need to, uh, you know, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll need to, I'll need to brace myself for that unless, uh, <laughs> you know, unless we get some sort of ghost liver out of, uh, out of the Coom Abbey. <laughs> or like I say, it's all to do with mindset. Just go in there with a really strong mindset that you can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be absolutely awesome. Awesome, but they're pimping you out for cocktails now. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> it's getting wild already, and it's a oh God. days away. You, you, will, you will be getting on that plane, I hope, after all listening to our yeah. chat room tonight. <laughs> You're like backing out at the last moment because we scared you off in the UK. <laughs> no, no, no. I, don't, I don't get scared by much, so bring it on. We'll have spirits and spirits. <laughs> That's, um, thank God for that is all I can say because you know if you had a weaker yeah. a weaker mindset you know you, you may you may have like backed out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not scared too easily. So whilst you're over in the UK, is there anywhere else that you'd like to visit? Well, you know, I've been to a lot of locations over there. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've been to Warwick Castle, and I believe I'll probably pop into there uh, again. And um, you know, really, I'm. I'm I'm in uh, I'm in the UK pretty frequently, so a lot of it will be touching base with some friends and um, you know just visiting some some pubs that I'm uh, that I know. But this is what I'll say: is if anybody has any recommendations or uh, anything that they think I should check out, you know, just let me know. You can you can tell me now in the chat room. You can let me know when I see you in person. Uh, I'm up for everything. I also, another thing I do when I travel and I travel a lot is I find the haunted locations, I find the tiki bars, and I also find movie locations, movie sets. So, um, you know, so I, I do that. So if you have any tips, you know, please let me know. Right, there's a sound bite right there. Aaron is up for anything, everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, on that note, we are drawing to the end of the show. I'd like to say thank you so much, Aaron. Why don't you let everybody know where they can find you and follow you? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me on the show, and I look forward to seeing everyone next week at Sage Paracon. Uh, in the meanwhile, you can say hi to me on Facebook. I'm pretty easily found on there, Aaron Sagers or Aaron Sagers page. You can also find me on Twitter at Aaron Sagers and on Instagram at Aaron Sagers. And, you know, just reach out and say hi and, and tell me where you found me. 
Um, and also, of course, paranormalpopculture.com. But hey, where you really should find me is you should find me in just a few days at Coombe Abbey for Sage Paracon. I want to see you there, and I want you to say, S- heard you on the radio, and uh, wanted to come out and meet you and have a good old time together. So that's how you can find me. Brilliant. And I will be catching up with you live on air at some point over the weekend, I am sure. <laughs> and for those people, poor people that can't go, unfortunately. Now, you did an absolutely amazing, amazing <laughs> um, little advert for the Sage Paracon, which I'm going to play out with. I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you again. And thank you so much, Carl. Thank you for joining me tonight. Always a pleasure. And on that note, we bid you all a very farewell and a good night. Hey there, friends and fiends. I am TV host and journalist Aaron Sagers from Paranormal Pop Culture, and you are listening to Parasearch Radio with your host, Carrie. Join us at Coom Abbey Hotel from the 8th to 11th, November 2018 at the Sage Paracon for a VIP weekend of all things paranormal. Tickets are on sale now at www.sageparacon.co.uk. Tickets are limited, so do not miss out. Get yours today, and I mean right now, right this second. I will wait for you to get them, and then I will see you there. You're listening to The Spirit Dimension on Parasearch Radio UK with your host, Kerry. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.